You're listening to the Staging Sips Podcast with Lori Fisher. This podcast is dedicated to helping real estate staging CEOs build healthy businesses that grow, flow, and thrive. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so happy to be with you, and I'm actually coming to you from a really interesting location today. So if my sound sounds a little bit different, it's because I am actually away. I am in Cartagena, Colombia, in a treehouse, like a legit treehouse, like in an eco-resort or something. It's very, very cool. But Anyway, I wanted to make sure that I got in and recorded a podcast because it's really interesting when I go on vacation and, you know, it strips away all of the, um, I don't know, just the busyness of life. I have a lot of thoughts that come to me. And today's podcast is actually inspired by conversations that we've been having inside of the Rethink You monthly coaching calls or the bi-monthly coaching calls that we have. Is that bi-monthly? Twice a month? (laughs) Anyway, I've been talking a lot with business owners about this busy spring real estate season. And when we're in the busiest season, you know, right now, this is the time of this recording in the spring, we tend to see where our systems and processes are not as dialed in as we were hoping they were because the volume of work has just increased. And so you can begin to see where the wheels start to fall off the bus. <laughs> so we've been talking specifically about what for those business owners that are running uh, moderately sized to larger size vacant staging businesses with inventory, maybe warehouse space, multiple storage spaces. But I think this is super relevant to any of us in business, regardless of whether we have that big of a business, if we're doing, if we're, we've got inventory, because today what I want to talk about is how do you evaluate and how do you change course when it becomes apparent that a system is not working quite the way you want it to. So sit tight and listen, If even if you don't have that kind of business. But anyway, so what's been going on for these business owners is that they're realizing that from the time that uh, an appointment and install gets put on their calendar, that there are things that are happening on the pulling side that don't feel particularly efficient, that things that are, are important to the installation, like the tools that you need are not making it onto the truck. And so there's visits back and forth to the warehouse or storage facility. There's also issues on turnaround time. There's issues on um, when destaging happens, things not getting restocked or they're not getting restocked well or in an organized manner. And so they're really seeing where their systems just need improvement and tweaking. And so in our coaching calls, we have started to delve into this a little bit, but I wanted to dive in even deeper. So this is really a gift to those business owners. And I wanted to share it with you as well. So I want to talk today about what I call the fix it protocol. And the fix it protocol looks something like this. So the F is for fact find. The I is to create an issues list. The X is to quickly cross the simplest and easiest things that you can do to change course. Like do that now, get those things checked off. And then we're going to integrate something called OKRs, which is objectives and key results. And I'll talk about that a little bit later to help achieve the rest, those bigger things that might take longer term habit and pattern change. And then you're going to track those OKRs, objectives and key results to the success, successful implementation, implementation of all of those things. So let's dive into this a little bit so that we can get it. And the first thing I want to say is ride out this bumpy period. So the beautiful thing about our businesses, and it's the bane of a lot of people's existence, but I see it as a total positive, is the fact that we have seasonality and that we have times where things can really slow down for us. So I call those debrief or integration periods. So while we're in the busy season, we have to do a little bit of self-talk. And be like, this is, we're going to get through it. We'll get through it. We're just going to get through it the best that we can right now. And then start to address and really go through this fix it protocol during those periods of integration and, and debrief. So when the summer months come and everybody has a little more time to breathe, you don't have quite the volume of work is a really great time to start going through this protocol to improve your systems. Because really at the end of the day, owning a staging business is really a cycling back and a circling back repeatedly for, you know, 
a long period of time where, like I said, we've even done that in our business. You're just cycling back to refine and improve, refine and improve, uncover the issues, refine and improve. So let's go through this fix it protocol and dive into what this looks like. So the, the first F is fact find. So this is where you want to take your own observations for what has gone off the rails and you want to couple this with feedback from your team and who those who are on the frontline implementation process. And you just want to get curious about what they see as the issues or the reasons why certain things are not happening. So for example, if it's inventory management, like the physical you know, management of getting things restocked. Let's use that as an example. So getting things from D stage to back on the shelves and the inventory system management updated. So you might learn from your team that they feel like they have too much work. So they might feel like they don't have enough time to, you know, do the install, do a D stage and get things back on the shelves. And very often they just feel like they are drinking from a water hose. Um, or they might tell you that it doesn't, they, they're not familiar enough with the inventory to understand how to get things, you know, how you like things organized. They're never really sure where to put things back. Maybe, uh, you know, they're worried that the art, you know, the way you have it organized is getting damaged the, the way that it's getting put back. So they hesitate and they don't want to be in, you know, get in trouble for that. But you might hear all kinds of things related that you didn't even think about that might be coming up for your team as it comes to implementing some of this. So as you get that feedback, you want to look at things like um, creating your issues list. So that's your I, creating your issues list. So you might look at it and go, okay, so they're telling me that they have too much work. So is it a staffing issue? Is it, or is it that we've got a scheduling issue? We're scheduling too many services for the staff availability and the staff time that we have. What is our churn rate? Are we, you know, our, what is our ability to keep up with the volume of work, right? So again, you may have pared down your team because of the quieter months, you know, that you have, but you might actually need the, that team, whether it's the existing team to flex their hours and expand their hours for you in the springtime. And you need to prepare for that ahead of time, or you need to bring on extra staff in preparation for your busier times. So what is your ability to keep up with that churn rate? What is the system for restock? Do people actually know what the system is? Because if it feels, you know, random and chaotic, well, maybe that's the reason why they're not sure how to get things back on the shelves. Are there physical limitations within your storage facility, which makes it difficult for them to be able to restock, especially as you get to the time where everything starts coming back in and maybe there's not enough physical space in order for it to truly be organized. And then maybe there's training. Maybe they don't actually know um, how they should be doing it. It could also be that there's not ownership over that restock, right? So people don't actually know who's responsible. They just know that the D stage has come in, but they don't know if it's their job or not to get things back on the shelf or to get them, you know, items re-inventoried back in your system. So who is responsible? So you'll, th that would be your issues list that you've created. So one of the things that you will want to do is quickly cross off things that are simple and easy to fix. That's your I. So if it is a matter of who has ownership, that's really simple. That is simply talking to your team and identifying one to two people that are responsible for restock. So they know that when a D stage comes in, it's their job to make sure that it happens. And I remember back when I was working at TGI Fridays back in the day, we always had at the beginning of every shift, we had a shift meeting. It was like a quick check-in meeting where we learned what the priorities for the shift were. So if we were selling a new promotion, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that they were buying the, you know, the unlimited cheesy breadsticks or whatever, um, that we were focused on that. And we had a shift leader and the shift leader was responsible for rallying us all around Keep, you know, keeping track of like maybe having a scoreboard for who sold, you know, how many cheesy breadsticks each person had sold. And we, you know, had a leaderboard and things like that. It was simply a way to keep us on track, but it was a way to have someone fully responsible. So the shift leader was responsible for helping the team sell the cheesy breadsticks. So 
Um, I'm cracking up because I'm thinking there's comedy duo Key and Peel, and they talk about the cheesy breadsticks. <laughs> Every time I say it, I'm kind of giggling inside. Anyway, um, so that's something that is like a quick and easy cross off the list. That's your X. The next thing is you are looking at your things that are probably needing longer term solutions. And that is where you're going to integrate these objectives and key results. So what are objectives and key results? So OKRs is the nomenclature. So OKRs is something that I learned from the book, Measure What Matters by John Doerr, D-O-E-R-R. I'll put the link in the show notes. And John worked at Intel and Google to make sure that those organizations had objectives and key results for each department that helped the company meet the overall objective. And uh, the key results are always measurable. So it's a number so that you know if you hit the mark or didn't hit the mark. So that then you can either adjust your key result or you can keep it on as a key result longer and give yourself more time. So let's look at it from the, the idea of things coming in from D stage and being restocked in a really organized way inside your warehouse. So that would be your objective. Like your, probably your overall objective would be that from the time an installation is put on the calendar, the pull is organized and somewhat everything that is on the truck is on the truck. And from the time you get back, things get brought back in, they are restocked in an organized manner. So that might be one big overall, just inventory management is spot on tight dialed in big objective, not super uh, defined or identified. Key result within that would be something like 100% of the time, every item and tool needed for an installation is on the truck. So, and within 90 days, so you want to give it a date as well. So within 90 days and a 90 day period, you're measuring how many times your team has to come back to the warehouse for something. And this is given, this is the staff responsibility. So the team, whoever is responsible, whoever's got ownership for that process, it is their job to achieve 100% or 89%, whatever you want it to be, whatever that percentage is, that the the 100% of things that need to be on the truck are on the truck. So you evaluate that for 90 days. It's super clear. You'll know if you hit it because it is super clear. 90 days, you look back. So then if you're looking at restock, if you want restock to happen within 24 to 48 hours, right? So that would be something where you're going to measure how long it takes to, to restock the average house of inventory, you know, full of inventory that you have within 90 days so that you clearly understand how much time it takes. And this is really important because knowing that is going to help you with something I'm going to talk about in a minute called your weekly cadence and how you schedule it. So that might be one key result that you're going to ask everybody to track, whoever's restocking, track how long it takes to restock an item and report that. So then you can get an aggregate where you say, okay, on average, it takes 90 minutes to restock a full house worth of items. Um, Another key result for that restock would be that, um, again, within 90 days, you know, 90% of our D stages are back on the shelves in an organized manner in 48 hours. That's another thing that can be measured and tracked and looked at. Again, somebody is going to need to be responsible for this, not just the business owner. So you're going to want to identify a team member who is responsible for this this key result. But what you can see is these key results are all leading toward your overall objective. They're measurable and you're you're rallying your entire organization toward it. So this is why, and you want probably two to three I would say key results for one objective. So don't bite it all off at one time. So you might want to just look at the front end first and say, okay, making sure that we have everything we need, including every, you know, the right amount of accessories and art and all of that. That might be your first um, objective with key results is just getting the front end of an install done. And then you work on the back end, which is the restock. You don't want to give yourself too many things because when we're trying to do too many things, we're never going to get anything done well. We want to hone in just like habit creation, 
pattern creation, you've got to start with micro, like fractions of actions. So break it down into each step of, of a vacant process and work on one silo of it. Okay. So this brings me to when you start tracking, like how long it takes for a, a D stage, if we're going to use that example and you're staffing, you want to look at weekly cadence. The weekly cadence inside your business is when appointments get done. So for our business, one of the things that we have is, for example, styling evaluations happen every day of the week and they are available from 10 to 1 and 1 to 3. Vacant installations happen on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Pulling, packing, and destage and restock happen on Mondays and Fridays. So what that does is it gives us a workflow to look at. And for our team, one of the changes that we made because of uh, it taking us too long to install was we implemented that our inventory would be delivered the day before we arrive, the, the staging team arrives to install. Now that's because we work with an outside mover and a furniture rental company. So we would always have our mover bring our inventory in the day ahead of time. That way on install day, our team could get in and un undo the rugs, get them all vacuumed, start placing art throughout the house, start steaming shower curtains, get all the bathrooms done while we waited for our bigger furniture pieces to roll in. So that may not be realistic for every business, but that was what worked for our business. And it was based upon just looking at every aspect and how could we become more efficient and better at this. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, you take that cadence and what you do is you plug that into your Google Calendar. Actually, let me tell you how to create it. So take all you're going to do is create a table that's three rows across and two, um, three rows across, right? Is that right? <laughs> And then, and then two, uh, two rows. I guess that's three columns, three columns, two rows. Does that make sense? So you're going to have Monday through Friday. Actually, it's not three columns. It's Monday through Friday. Create that. And then you're going to have a morning session, a morning row and an afternoon row. There we go. Now I got it. Um, morning row and afternoon row. And you're going to place on that table what activities you want, what makes sense for your business. So for us, like I said, we have our Mondays and Friday routine of, um, pull pack and, uh, D stage at our pull pack D stage and restock our Mondays and Fridays. And then we have our install days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then styling evals every morning and every afternoon as available appointments, the in general. Then what we have done is we have created a Google calendar for every team member where we know what their availability is. So it's their days off are all in there. And then we have a vacant pull, a vacant install, and a restock calendar, two, three different calendars. And here's the reason why we do this. When our team gets an installation, what happened, you know, we have signed client agreement and we're planning the installation. Our office queen, Catherine, can pull up in front of her all of the team schedule, and then she can pull up the install calendar. And she can see where there's an overlap of team availability and an install day. And then she can assign the install right then and there to the team members who are available. And it gets copied to their, their Google calendar. So they see that. She also knows that we like to do our pulls on that Monday before or even the Friday before. So she... Again, we'll have that pull calendar pulled up and see whose team of, who's available on the team to do that work and assign it immediately right there. So this way, that whole process gets done. The same thing with the D stage. When we know we have a D stage day and our mover is picking up all of our items, Catherine knows that she is scheduling somebody for restocking on the next available day that we have for the next available team member. So it's really organized so that things are always getting done according to the workflow. And it's because we have a cadence, because we know. So we're not taking appointments. We're not putting people on the calendar within 24 hours. Our client agreement, what we always say is from the time that a signed client agreement happens, the install happens in seven to 10 business days. And the reason for that is that it gives us the lead time in order to make sure that our team is available and scheduled, our mover is available and scheduled, the pull and pack is ready. It's coordinated with our 
moving guy. We have breathing room to get this work done. It's not, it's not luxurious amounts. We're not saying, oh, we're, you know, it's a month from now, but it is reasonable for our business. So I want you to look at that. And the, the way you get to that is a lot of mindset because sometimes we feel like because a realtor has asked for an emergency install or to do it tomorrow that we should deliver. So, or they're going to go somewhere else or they're not going to be happy with us or whatever. You got to work on some of your mindset around that because what I have found is that realtors will ask for that because they really do want to know what the next available is. They don't, they don't necessarily need that specific day. Ooh, a helicopter is going overhead. I don't know if anybody can hear that, but... (laughs) So that is how you begin to fix your systems when it, especially when it comes to inventory is you definitely need a weekly cadence to your business. You need to overlay that with your staff availability so that you can even see if you have enough staff available to do all the steps that need to happen. But the way you get that is, is to that is through that fix it protocol, that fact, find, create your issues list, quickly cross things off that can be easily done, integrate the objectives and key results to help achieve those longer term things that need to be repaired, and then track those objectives and key results to success. All right. I hope that wasn't too big of a gulp. I hope it was a moderately sized sip for the week. Uh, I hope you have a wicked good week and I will see you next time on the Staging Sips. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to the Staging Sips podcast. If you love what you've learned here today and you want to learn more about how to market and grow your staging business more strategically, I would love to see you join us inside of the Rethink You Mentorship Program. If you want more details and get on our waiting list, you can go to rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash waitlist. Looking forward to seeing you in the classroom.